In the second video, looking at phage particle morphology and the biology of T4 phage, we're going to talk about the lytic cycle using the T4 phage as a model. So let's begin with talking about the particle morphology of the T4 phage. It is a tailed phage belonging to Myoviridae. So it has the icosahedron head, but instead of having a long flexible tail, it has a shorter, wider tail that looks more like a syringe needle. And so this wider tail has a base uh, and also these long tail fibers that look more like lunar landing gear. This virus has a huge genome, much larger than the genomes that we're looking at in class, which range from about 15,000 base pairs to about 78,000 base pairs. It has 289 genes and eight tRNAs. Imagine trying to annotate this huge genome. It would take the entire class to do this one genome. What's also interesting about the genome of T4 is although it resides in a host, E. coli, that has 50% GC content, the GC content of its genome is actually only 34.5%. That means the majority of its genome is made up of A's and T's instead of G's and C's. So let's look at the lytic cycle, and you should remember this from last semester. I'm just going to add a few layers to what you already understand about the lytic cycle. And we're going to talk about the lytic cycle with a focus on the types of promoters that the phage uses to regulate the timing of the different types of genes that are expressed at different points in the cycle. And there's essentially three points that we'll talk about. We'll talk about the early gene expression, there's usually some middle gene expression, then there's a late gene expression and release of the phage particles. So in the beginning, the phage binds usually a specific molecule on the surface of the protein. And for T4, this is the lipopolysaccharide. Once it binds um, these molecules, it's bound irreversibly. It's very, very um, stable. It causes conformational changes in the phage capsid protein, which allows release of the phage genome inside the cell. Once the phage genome is inside the cell, the next thing it wants to do is to begin replication of its own genome for packaging later. But before it does that, because it wants as many of the resources as possible to do this, it shuts down host DNA uh, synthesis and it shuts down host protein synthesis. And because it wants to use um, all these resources, it actually degrades the host DNA so it can use the nucleotides for its own uh, DNA synthesis. So the genes needed to do all this are expressed first. And in order to express them right away, it uses a certain type of promoter, which we're going to call an early promoter. And you should be able to guess what that promoter would look like based on what you know about the host promoters, the host housekeeping promoters. There's also a set of middle genes that are expressed. We won't talk about these much, um, but these middle genes um, might be uh, transcription factors um, needed for late gene expression. The early genes are mostly enzymes needed for degrading the host DNA and shutting down host protein synthesis, and also transcription factors to turn on the middle gene expression. Um, and also there are likely DNA uh, enzymes or anything needed for DNA replication um, expressed either at the early and middle uh, stages of the lytic cycle. In the late gene expression uh, phase, this is when the structural proteins are made. And these are made after the genomes have been, rep uh, been replicated. And this makes sense if you really think about it, because you don't want phage particles made that are empty, that don't have genomes. So if you want to have genomes in the phage particles, then it's best to make the phage proteins after DNA replication. And there's some other reasons why this order of gene expression is important as well. But in any case, this late promoter looks very different than the middle and the early promoters, so that this is only turned on after transcription factors are made in the middle gene expression. And so finally, once the assembly of the particles 
occurs, there are some genes expressed called lysins, which allow release of the particles, and the cycle repeats. So let's first talk about the first step in the cycle, which is absorption. Um, the tail fibers are really important for that first interaction of the particle with the cell surface. It's recognizing a specific molecule on the surface. Um, once one touches, another will come along and touch. And what happens are there's conformational changes in these proteins that allow the base then to sit down and have a very close interaction with the surface of the cell. This causes more uh, conformational changes in the tail that ultimately result in the tail tube uh, in being injected through the, the cell surface layers and injection of the DNA inside the cell. So there's specific binding to the lipopolysaccharides that leads to conformational changes in the tail fibers. Those conformational changes in the tail fibers lead to conformational changes in the base plate and ultimately injection of DNA in the, cells, in the cell. So let's look a little more closely at how the phage actually penetrates the cell wall. Well, phage particles are kind of like mouse traps. Um, we'll look at the phage particle up here in the corner. These can be out in the environment for ages, and they're per perfectly stable particles. Um, but all the proteins in this phage particle are not at its lowest energy state, which mean, means um, there's energy stored in these phage proteins, much like there's energy stored in a mouse trap that has been set with a piece of cheese. This little mouse trap can sit around in the attic all day and for nights until a little mouse comes along and nibbles on the cheese, and that's to trigger um, to release this little bar, which is going to snap down and um, unfortunately kill the little mouse. But in any case, that energy is stored here in the spring until the mouse sets the trigger. And now down here, the, the mouse trap is in its lowest energy state. And in order to reset the trap, somebody has to come along and pull the spring back and set it again to store that energy in the spring. Now, the, the virus particle is much like this mouse trap. And instead of a mouse coming along and nibbling um, on the trigger, the, the particle has receptor proteins, and these receptor proteins are located first in the tail fiber proteins. And instead of a mouse nibbling on the tail fiber proteins, the tail fiber proteins are interacting with receptors on the surface of the cell. And that interaction is favorable and causes conformational changes in these tail fiber proteins, which then causes conformational uh, changes in these other tail fiber proteins, which then contract and then interact with the uh, lipopolysaccharide itself. This then causes more conformational changes such that the tail tip um, now is going to go through conformational changes um, and exposing parts of the protein that have lysozyme activity so that it can start to burrow through the LPS and the peptidoglycan. Um, and finally resulting in injection of the DNA inside the cell. So um, these, these particles are really clever how they're put together such that they're stable until they find the very specific molecules on the surface of the cell in which they want to re uh, release the contents of, of the DNA inside the cell. So what happens once the DNA gets inside the cell? There's early phage gene expression, and there's host DNA degradation. So the phage is going to express proteins um, that are going to be involved first in degrading the host DNA. And the other thing that's included during early phage gene expression are transcription factors that are going to turn on the middle genes. Um, now these enzymes, since they can be used over and over again, which might be nucleases um, uh, and transcription factors, are proteins that can be made in pretty low quantities. So here's the DNA of the host that's been degraded, and now all these nucleotides can be metabolized and reused um, for, um, for the phage genome uh, synthesis. So nucleotides available for phage DNA synthesis and genome replication. Okay, so then there's middle gene expression, 
And many of these genes are involved in, are enzymes, in fact, that are involved in genome replication. And now we have more genomes that are available as templates for late gene expression. And so late gene expression occurs. And uh, late gene expression leads to all the structural proteins made in order to assemble the particles. And finally, the very last thing that's expressed are the lysins needed to, uh, to release, to break through the cell membrane and break through the peptidoglycan and release um, all the phage particles. So the DNA is made through something called rolling circle replication that produces concatamer. Um, we're going to review what we talked about in the first video. Um, the, the proteins here that are involved um, that are part of the terminase are going to recognize this, uh, this concatamer of viral DNA. It's going to find an uh, immature capsid head. It's going to package the DNA. And again, only one unit is made. It, it recognizes these COS sequences. Um, and the terminase snips them, producing sticky ends. Um, and one genome unit has been packaged into the head in an ATP-dependent manner. And you can see that um, we have a kind of a round head here representing an immature head and then the icosahedron head, head here indicating that the capsid maturation protease has uh, been at work. Um, and now this mature head is being added onto a mature tail and we have an infectious virion. Those virions are released from the cell. Here's a cell releasing tons of phage progeny um, due to the production of uh, enzymes called lysins and also a really cool transmembrane protein called the holin, which pokes lots of holes in the cell membrane in order to let the lysins out of the cell and have access to the peptidoglycan. So again, these are these genes that I talked about in the lysis cassette that include lysin A and lysin B. And usually the holin is, is right in between. Um, in this case, there's a fourth gene in the, in the lysis cassette, although I don't know that it's related to lysis. But again, these are genes you'll want to look for in your genome, and they're usually grouped together. So some of the things you might want to think about um, is, for example, lysins would be really dangerous to um, express early. What are some other reasons that you can come up with with the, the order of the gene expression that we talked about, the early, the middle, and the late gene expression? Why is that order of gene expression so critical to the success of this uh, life cycle? And um, in class on Friday, what we'll talk about is how does the phage control early, middle, and late gene expression and have those genes turned on at the appropriate times during the life cycle?